Good morning, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with a Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on June 5th, 2022, on 12 p.m. Eastern Time. In today's video, we are going to analyze the impact of the warming tropical main development region, and we're going to be breaking down all of the impacts that could be associated with that and what to expect for the remainder of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. So first of all, taking a look at the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that we don't really have much ongoing. We noticed that there is a broad area of lower pressure out here. This was actually associated with tropical storm Arlene in the Gulf of Mexico, which of course is no longer a thing. We do have a system to watch out here in the far subtropical Atlantic, only a 10% chance of development, so not really going to focus on that. But this could bring some heavy rainfall to portions of the northern continent there of Africa, or the northern coast of Africa there, and also to portions of the United Kingdom. And then in the main development region, watching a few tropical waves in the intertropical convergence zone, a big wave coming off here. This will be moving westward over the next couple of days. Development is not currently anticipated as strong upper level winds and dry air prohibit much of any significant formation. This is that little bit of a tropical disturbance that we have been talking about that we just previously discussed as 10% formation area. Again, not much in the way of development currently anticipated. Just a broad upper and mid-level spin here in the atmosphere generating with it some shower and thunderstorm activity. But we noticed a pretty strong upper level winds that are beginning to impinge on this system and therefore development is not currently anticipated. However, this will bring some heavier rainfall to portions of the Azor Islands located right here where my cursor is. So this is the Azor Islands and some heavier winds and heavier rainfall are to be expected across this area through the next several days. Elsewise though, this is just going to be bringing some heavier rainfall to portions of the United Kingdom as it span over the next couple of days. So switching our attention to the Atlantic main development region today. We notice that in this graphic, it very clearly illustrates what's kind of been going on for the past several months. We've had generally lower than average pressures out across the Canary Current, where that L symbol is, indicating an area of lower pressure. And what that has generally led to is a weakening of the trade winds that come off the coast of Africa, because with lower pressures, you are decreasing the amount of really the pressure gradient force. So you're decreasing pressure gradient force across Africa. And as such, you are reducing the trade winds that come screaming across and into the Atlantic main development region. In fact, in the 5,000 foot level or 850 millibars, you've actually had westerly winds, which has actually induced a little bit of cyclonic turning down there across the main development region. And later in the season, this is going to be good for helping tropical waves develop, but also this actually helps to lower the trade winds even further and induce a lot of warming. And now today's temperature is sitting roughly at about one to one half degrees Celsius above the long term average, which is very warm for the Atlantic and especially for this early in the season. It is certainly a little bit of a concerning picture. And to further this even more, we're looking here at this graphic, which illustrates that there's going to be less shear across the tropical Atlantic over the next several weeks. Now, keep in mind that this is all relative when we talk about less shear because this is June 5th and not something like September 5th. So there's still going to be a lot of shear out here. But the overall trend is that we're having less vertical shear from the tropical Pacific induced into the tropical Atlantic in the MDR. Now, there is some signals that this actually might persist well into the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, which you would think would be the complete opposite because of the developing ENSO, the positive ENSO out there in the equatorial Pacific. And that would be true, but it seems like that this year might be the exception. And the only such record of a thing happening, you have to go all the way back to 1951 where we had a, a moderate to strong El Nino, but also less vertical shear in the Atlantic because it was quite above the long-term average. So it seems like that we're going to have less shear and most of the forecast guidance continues to paint that picture, which means that the Atlantic might actually be a little bit more active than we first thought. 
So even though we're going to have less shear across this region over the next several weeks, this is not the prime formation area for the month of early June. In fact, we notice here the red area and where the text is, it indicates where the prime area for tropical cyclone formation is going through early into mid-June and even into late June. So we're really not going to be paying attention to the Caribbean or the MDR for the next several weeks. But homegrown, close to home activity where people could be impacted, that's where we're going to have to watch for out the next several weeks and going through the month of July. Going forward in time here, we're looking at the GFS precipital water field. So basically everywhere in the warmer colors, especially in the area where my cursor is right now, all of these pinks and reds, this indicates a lot of moisture content in the atmosphere. And we're looking out here in the Caribbean right now because there's a pretty important thing that's going to be ongoing throughout about the next seven days, really. We notice all of this tropical moisture in the Caribbean and even up into Cuba, which is over here. It's not well highlighted, but this is Cuba right here. This is Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the Lesser Antilles right here. Well, what we notice is that over the next several days, we're going to have a lot of deep tropical moisture being pulled from the eastern Pacific and all the way kind of wrapped around into the Caribbean. Now, this is not a Central American gyre. We're not expecting any tropical development to form from this at this current time. Uh, but we do notice a lot of tropical moisture does get ingested northward, especially in the portions of Cuba, Haiti, the USVI, um, even to some extent there with the tropical waves coming from there. And we notice that this tropical moisture gets injected all the way up really to near Bermuda as well. And this stays here for the next several days. We're going to have a lot of heavy rainfall in this area. So a big time flooding threat is possible out here in portions of Cuba and the Caribbean as well as we stretch throughout the next several days. But elsewise, no tropical cyclone formation is currently expected, which is to be the good news there. And taking a final look here at the tropical eastern Pacific basin, not really much is going on right now. A few tropical waves located out there in the intertropical convergence zone. But so far, the models have not been picking up on any substantial development over the next seven days. And nothing said from the National Hurricane Center. Just a bunch of upper level winds and dry air prohibiting any significant tropical cyclone formation at this point in time. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. God bless. Take care. And I'll be talking to you guys again some more over the next several days.